I'm Sean Thompson. I'm the nation's leading expert on mortgages featuring renovation finance. And this is our Wholesale Renovation Learning Series. Just a couple of notes before we begin. If you have questions on what you hear in any of this recording, my contact info is listed below, along with any of the reference links that you hear in this recording. If you're not already an approved partner with us and you want to become one, you know, feel free to reach out to me directly with the same contact information. If you are already an approved partner with us and you have questions that are not answered in any of this recording, please feel free to contact your account executive. They'll certainly be able to help. Now let's get you making some money with renovation loans. Here is Sean Thompson to take you through the great info he has for you today. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. Well, good to be with all of you uh, once again on this one. Uh, we're going to get uh, a little bit in the weeds in this one. The way I, the way I'll, I'll sort of preface this is, there are some originators who are more of the push push the button and wait for the outcome kind of and 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 how they get to the end result is really no interest so long as they do get there um then there are others of you out there who kind of like to see what's under the hood you know or what it's like before you turn the engine on i'm i'm like throwing like a bunch of analogies at you at the same time but what i want you to take away from today's session is no matter which one of those types of, of, of originators you are, this system is designed to help you safely navigate you and your borrower through renovation financing here with us at Cardinal Financial Wholesale with little or no additional reno related effort from you, right? So I'll continue to reiterate that today, you know, but we're going to get a look under the hood, talk a little bit about our process as we get through this and um, kind of how it works. What I find interesting is every lender out there who does renovation will somewhat publish a high level, here's our process. And it's kind of like a six steps or nine steps or seven steps. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, here's ours, but it ends up being a little laughable because the devil's in the details. The key questions end up being, okay, well, these are your six steps, these are your nine steps, but who's doing it, right? Who's doing those steps and um, who's responsible for those jobs to be done? Because we all know it's a 20,000 foot view. So today I'm going to give you some insight as to how our sausage is made. And I keep toggling between the, the steps. We got nine steps if you go to ours, right? So I'm going to talk to you about some of the key players involved. Um, generally speaking, your, your, your uh, account executive, of course, um, is there for for you in, in a bunch of different ways, not limited to, you know, pricing, renovation, you know, octane staging if needed, you know, credit related inquiries, you know, the renovation transaction coordinator, if you're not familiar with that term, you know, is a production facing renovation advisor, right? That is walking you through the, the scenarios, setups and tasks, and really are kind of the, the front facing um, folks on our team, the project coordinator, renovation project coordinator, this is a pretty unique position is an uninterrupted project supervisor. So they're interacting primarily with contractors, customers, municipalities, you know, and inspectors, right? Although you see them rooting around in your transaction, you generally don't talk to them that much, right? So I'm going to try and be chronological or stay chronological, meaning walk you through start to finish you know, in the order of an actual loan, you know, starting with the pre-flight or the scenarios, you may not have your deal completely teed up yet and you want to understand what you can and can't do, right? So I would I would urge you to reach out to your account executives to use some of our measuring tools, you know, for this that we have online for you, the 30-day closing calculator, for example, you know, the max mortgage worksheet, which is not required for our loans, you know, but sometimes they give you some good some good ability to see what's possible with the loans ahead of time and the minimum property standards uh, document. That's a great one so that you can sort of see what ought to be done in order for a property to pass inspection either now or post-closing, right? Or what should be in my scope of work, if you will. I'm also going to introduce to you guys the renovation scenario desk, right? Which means you can reach out directly 
to the renovation team along with your AE, all right, and one easy, simple, you know, request for them to find out what can and can't be done and ask us direct detailed questions around the renovation or construction portion of the loan, all right? So that's huge, and I want to be able to offer that to you guys, and that will be offered to you as a link directly from your, your AE, your account executive here at Cardinal Financial Wholesale. When we get to onboarding, you know, any additional standard info, you know, you only really need the renovation amount apart from any additional standard info, right? Meaning your credit stuff is your credit stuff. You do that on your non-rental loans. But when it comes to renovation loans, we're not asking you to do much, if at any at all, but certainly let us know what your intended renovation amount is going to be. That's pretty much it, right? So I'm going to show you kind of what happens behind the scenes. A couple of key renovation pages in Octane you should know about um, for the input, um, the property turn screen, the construction screen, and the terms. Um, I don't have examples, but I'll make sure I include them, you know, on this particular presentation when we do send it out. Um, and the notes section. The notes section become really important. I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. So the first time you get introduced to the transaction coordinator in your tra in your in your in your files that you give to us, you know, you're gonna you're gonna have an LO consultation, right? So the LO consultation, that's what we cover. It's a really important step. We cover sort of what what are you guys doing with renovation? What are you aiming for? You know, your closing dates, things like that. Uh, what are the program guidelines? And we we just kind of do a quick check to make sure you're still within them, right? Um, what's the current property status? Is utilities on or off? Or has this house been vacant for a very long time? You know, is there contractor info? There's not. Remember, 30% of our deals come in the door where the customer hasn't chosen a contractor yet. And any third party needs, if applicable, meaning, do you have a HUD consultant already? And if you don't have a HUD consultant, do you need us to help you uh, 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 find one or refer one? Um, and that kicks off the next piece here is our project coordinator workflow, all right? So from there, you, the project coordinator, remember I told you, these are sort of, when I say uninterrupted, what I'm really referring to is that there's no other people that contractor and customer work with all the way until the project is completed, all right? So they review the scope of work, meaning the contractor bid, creating clarity around that. I'm gonna show you a little bit more information on that in just a minute. We're setting the project uh, projected project related boundaries. Yeah, I can talk today. Uh, project related boundaries, meaning what are you trying to do in the scope of work? Is it possible? Oh, this is what you're doing. Then you want to make sure that this and this and this happens. Those kind of conversations, right? We're ordering the cost analysis reports, which are needed on conventional renovation loans over $35,000 in repairs. Unlike the 203K, where it's a HUD consultant, that dynamic is happening with the transaction coordinator and the LO consultation. The cost analysis on conventional loans, the ordering of that report, should you need one, happens at the renovation project coordinator position. And then sort of explaining and facilitating validation, right? And I'm going to show you in the next slide, you know, that that is in fact a separate sort of workflow, if you will, you know, than the process of the scope of work. They often get conflated, right? The scope of work and the validation. Here's what I mean. The scope of work workflow may look and feel kind of like this. You have an initial submission, contractor gives us an initial bid, and then we go back and go, uh, can you break it out into labor and material, please? Because we have to have it broken out that way in most cases, right? And then we'll give it to an appraiser once we would get it back from the contractor. And the appraiser could say to us, hey, this is great and all what you guys are doing. I gave you an after improved value, but don't forget this health and safety item that needs to be added to the bid, right? And then we give that back to the contractor to get final soft sign off on what the, the, the complete and final version of the what the customer is going to do post-closing. But that's a track. And I wanted to point that out to you. So that's just the scope of work clarity part of it, right? When you look at validation, that's a separate track altogether, right? So we might get, and in our introduction to the contractor, we might request validation documentation. We get that back from the contractor, you know, and we review it. Uh, you didn't sign this page and you forgot a copy of your driver's license. Can you please give us that, right? And, and then we submit to our counterparty risk team to complete the validation step. And then there's a final decision. 
Those are two, those are two mutually exclusive tracks, right? So I really wanted to point that out. A lot of times they get conflated. Do you have everything you need from the contractor? Well, which one are you talking about? For validation or for the bid, right? The appraisal. I'm going to walk you through a track for the appraisal too. This is really important, you know, because I walked you through the scope of work clarity on this page, right? And this needs to have been completed before we started step one on the appraisal. You know, so when you think about that, not having a clear scope of work, meaning a real good understanding of the what you're going to do post-closing before the appraisal is ordered is one of the biggest mistakes I see originators make, right? So my old adage is you sacrifice a day or two up front to get this solidified will save you weeks on the tail end of back and forth, which bid worked. The appraisal gave me this. You need to add these more things. You should have gotten that. You know, this bid is not really final yet. Oh, we're waiting for the final one. Well, the value is wrong because we didn't have a fund. You see where I'm going with that, right? The sooner we would have gotten a clear scope of work before we ordered the appraisal, the better off your transaction is. I'm going to walk you through a step where we sort of help you understand where you are in that dynamic. Once we have the appraisal back and it's in final review, what we call final project review, we're kind of hoping we have a combination of a couple of things in order to pass that final project review. A, is my bid final, which I just talked to you about, right? Is my contractor in fact validated, which can happen at any moment in the transaction. It can happen up front. It can happen, you know, close to the appraisal coming back, you know, but is it in fact done, right? And then is the appraisal referencing the right document, right? Is the appraiser referencing the bid, the most, the latest version of that bid by date? You know, do they have an older version? Sometimes on two or three Ks, they have the contractor bid and not the work write-up. Sometimes on conventional loans, they have the work write-up and not the contractor bid. You know, it's inverted, right? And then is our work write-up and feasibility complete, right? Does it line up? So you think about that. You want it to line that keyhole to line up properly. My third-party bid, my actual contractor bid and my appraisal should all be referencing the same scope of work and the same price, right? So, and then we sort of look at the last piece, what do we need to start this project? Is upfront money needed to my contractor? And that discussion goes through the customer, right? So Mr. or Mrs. Borrower, you're about to close, your contractor is asking for $35,000 upfront. Um, he's allowed to get that. Are you okay with us giving it to him? right? So that the customer's involved in that discussion, and then you make it through your final project review. Now, I kind of walked you through, once you're at final project review, chances are you're stones throw, stones throw away from closing, you know, but the key notifications in Octane are really, really important, right? This helps you understand status-wise where your loan is. These were designed kind of like Amazon, you know, notifications, right? So when you look at them, it's kind of a, a recap of what's been done so that you always know what the status of your loan is relative to the renovation portion of it, right? You know, we initial reviews done, bought consultations are done, validation is done. Now remember, validation can be done at any point in here. The bids we got, we didn't look at them yet or we didn't approve them yet, but we got them. We want to let you know we got them, right? Um, and then we'll send you out when they're actually looked at and secured. That's when we confirm the appraisal can be ordered. Once we have bids received and they're done, the appraisal can be ordered, of course, right? Once the appraisal is reviewed. So this kind of plays like an Amazon tracking system, right? If you keep an eye on these in the notes section, all right, they come to you once those tasks have been completed. It's the quickest way to understand where your loan is relative to your closing. Now, I did point out that what makes this all really good and work really swiftly is the fact that you guys are communicating with transaction coordinators to find out what's going on, but our project coordinators are the ones who are really driving the dialogue between customers, contractors, municipalities, inspectors, all the way through the project. Meaning we don't hand that off to another draw person or another two draw people, you know, happening in post-closing, you know, to kind of mix up what's going on. This is one relationship and that works out super well when it comes to familiarity, holding our customers and contractors, you know, to the promises that they made prior to closing, of course, right? And then driving that project to completion. If we don't get a completed project, then this is all done for naught, right? So we want to make sure our project completes and completes safely on time with happy customers in the end that you can get more loans from, right? You know, so listen, 
as I round it off, here's my thoughts on this, you know, and I really want you guys to, you know, take the swing, you know, with the way that this works. You don't really need to understand all what's under the hood here. You know, I'm showing it to you so you get a feel for how easy this works and what you can look out for to keep the loan moving on your end. But if you're that light switch loan officer, you just found out how this works, right? You know, why this is made so easy for you. We don't require max mortgage worksheets. We don't require crazy forms that you need to learn how to use in order to fill out. We don't require that, you know, you keep an eye on where you are in Octane all the time. Remember, all you need to do is give us the amount that your customer projects they're going to spend in renovation in the beginning and all this magic happens downstream. So take the swing, trust the support we built for you, lean into the notifications. You know, you might find yourself, you know, with no need to call for status nearly as much if you go into the notes section and you know what those notifications mean and you leverage them, right? That's what I mean by leveraging our amazing technology, right? So I'm going to round it out there. I'll turn it back over to you, Victoria. We can take some questions now.